Hey everybody, this is Miguel A. Nunez Jr. And if you don't know already, you are watching, you probably know because you're here, unless you just found it. Uh, you are watching FlyNubianKingTV.com. FlyNubianKingTV.com. FlyNubianKing.com. I need you to hit the thumbs up button. I need you to uh, subscribe to this, guys, because I'm going to be here every day talking about stuff. I'm going to bring different people. I'm just going to have Ernie on tonight, but I'll mo moderate on this uh, entertainment issue for tonight. Was sick and couldn't join us. So everybody liked the, um, I don't know if you guys saw the post that uh, Taryn and I did. And it was straight up entertainment. And it was, um, we were talking about just different stuff in the entertainment industry. And how everybody needs certain things. And there's a lot of people in the little rural areas and across the country who don't have access to, to the talent, don't have access to the stars, don't have access to the producers, don't have access to the studios, don't have access to the knowledge about certain things. And, and a lot of times on my blog, I'm going to be helping schooling. I'm going to be taking your questions and the stuff. I can see, I can see you. Uh, we're going to be taking your, your questions and we're going to be answering them. And, and we're going to be talking about different issues because there's some talented people out there. Some talented, talented, talented people out there. I've seen you guys. I've run into you guys. I've had people go, man, can you read my script? And I'm like, oh, dude, dude. Can you read my script? Oh, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah, just give it to me. I mean, and you got guys have to understand. I get thousands of people ask me to read their script, read their story, listen to this idea. Oh, I got this idea, and this idea, and that idea, and this script, and this story, and this story, and this script. Blah, 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 blah. So you get a lot of that when you've been in the business a long time, producing, acting, directing, and all of that. So, and, and it's understandable. It goes with the territory. And I don't get upset about it. And everybody wants to know how you're so obsessible. I mean, you've done all of this stuff and, and you're still like the same guy because I don't ever let it go to my head. And it all, when you're in this business, you have to understand all of that goes with the territory, you know? It goes with the territory. It's like Eddie Murphy once told me, he goes, and I was like, uh, you know, these people that come up to you and they do all this. I'll give you an example. Check this out. I was in a store once. And I'm here. And there's a lady here. And the counter's there. So she's this way. No, she's behind me. And I'm in front of her. And the counter's up there. And there's some people in front of us. And she keeps looking around me like, no, this is me. She's going... You know who you is. So she says to me, you know who you is. And I'm like, uh, uh. And then, she, then the guy behind her, and this is me again, go, who is he? And she goes, grabs my shirt, turns me around to show this guy behind him who just asked the question who I was. In the meantime, the guy who's behind the counter yells, hey, what, who is that? Who is he? She turns me around. I guess she's going to use me to break in front of a line and starts to drag me up to the front. And I said, hey, lady, lady. And she said, you know what? You are very rude. So I was rude because I wouldn't let her drag me down the line and show me off like a puppy. And then there was, I, can go through, I can go through so many other instances, instances like that. And hold on, let me grab a different cup. Oh, this looks real country. And I am country, but this looks real country. Drinking from my Arby's. If you haven't had the Arby's crispy fish sandwich, you haven't had a fish sandwich. I eat at least 10 of them a week. It's the truth. Arby's crispy fish sandwich is off the chain. I don't know about the Arby's around you. Now, if you got a shitty Arby's, your fish might be shitty. But over here in Studio City, Arby's is on heat. But so anyway, so anyway, I need you guys to do me a favor. I need you guys to hit that button. I need you to like the video. I need you to subscribe to FlyNubianKingTV.com because I'm going to be coming here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday just talking to you about different stuff, bringing on different people. And again, we were having our entertainment co conference tonight because me and Taryn, Taryn, she's on, also on FlyNubianQueen.com. She's on FlyNubianQueen.com, Taryn. And she said, let's just have an open forum about the entertainment, and I'm going to ask you questions. So we kind of did it like that. And she was like, so Miguel. And she was just asking me, so tell me the, 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 the scariest moment, the, 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 the little, 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 and all these different questions. 
and it just it just it it, it made forced me to think about some of those great moments in my career and some of those really funny moments that I that you guys don't even know about some of the funny behind the scene shit that you I, I some of the behind the scene things that you guys never knew was going on when you see certain things and when you see scenes and and it's just opened up and it was so much fun we laughed and had such a good time and one of our biggest responses was you guys should do this more often we love this show we love this show so we're going to do that more often except parent is sick and tonight i thought i would bring one of my co-stars from uh, carl weber's new hit drama on bet called family business his name is ernie hudson you guys know him from um ghostbusters and lots and lots of other one of the greatest nicest guys you will ever 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 meet in your entire life ernie hudson is one of the nice, gentle spirit, a father, a family man, consummate professional. And he, he, he's just a great, great person. And he was gonna join us tonight and Taryn was gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go back and forth, talk about some funny shit. But uh, of course, Taryn is sick right now, and which I don't understand. Not because I don't understand she's sick. I just don't understand why people get sick and how they get sick. Because honestly to God, I've not been sick in at least 25 years. I guarantee you nothing. Ask anybody that you know me, have they ever seen me sick? I don't get sick, period. But I say those very words, I don't get sick at least 150,000 times a year. You're gonna hear it about 10,000 times just watching me here, because I don't and you can control it 100%. You can control whether you get sick or not. You can control that 100%. Now, right now, it's freezing in the daytime, night, cold in the daytime, and everybody around me all day long is sniffling and sniffling and, <laughs> and all of that. Now, I'm not saying that I don't sometimes feel that same thing I feel when I know, okay, I can feel that coming on sometimes, but I promise you, I block it out every time I hear my friends say, oh no, <laughs> oh yeah, I can tell I'm getting ready to be sick. Oh Lord, I'm getting ready. The moment you say that, the moment you say that, you're gonna be sick. When I start to feel those little, <laughs> and I, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. no, it's not happening. I don't get sick. Stop, I don't get sick. I'm not gonna be sick. And I'll keep saying it over and over and over all night long, all night long when I start to wheeze, I still say it next day it's like it never was there and i promise you the power of uh, of everything you possess i promise you we do the power of success you possess i'm living proof the power of success you possess the power of healing you possess it's all in you the bible says that if you believe the bible if you believe you're a christian if you believe the bible and then you have to believe that that part of the bible is true you know call it done say it but how faith works is this you gotta call it, you gotta ask for it, you gotta believe that it's done, and you gotta thank him for it. Now, that don't mean calling everybody you know. Saying, can I buy this, and can I, can, can I get that, and, 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 and all of this other stuff, then that's not faith. Once you get to the point where you can have that undying faith, it's just like, I guarantee you, I'm not gonna get sick. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna get in that concert. I'm gonna get into that place. When you start having those things, think about the times that you've done that and you've been really committed to something. And think about how many times you've overcome when you were committed to something. I'm trying to figure out why the hell is it so dark? Okay, just think about that. Once you get that down, then you know that you can accomplish anything and then nobody can stop you. But listen to me now, guys, I wanna get back into it. If you're just joining us right now, my name is Miguel Nunez. I'm an actor and I just like to talk about shit. So I found a good outlet here on FlyNubianKingTV.com. I need you to subscribe. I need you to hit the thumbs up button. I need you to like the video. I need you to subscribe to FlyNubianKingTV.com. And if you got money, yo, listen, it's not about what you make. It's about what you save and how you invest. Because there are people that made millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And have nothing. It doesn't matter what you make. You're going to make a lot of money in your lifetime. It's what you save 
and what you do with what you make in your lifetime. And one of the ways, and this sounds like a, 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 a cheesy plug, but it's absolutely true, and I do it. And if you go to Fly Nubian King, I'm sorry, FlyNubianMoney.com, FlyNubianMoney.com, or FlyNubianBusiness.com, FlyNubianMoney.com will teach you things that you can do to stretch what you do have now how to make it work and go further with the money you have now. There are things that you could be doing right now with the little money that you have that will stretch that little money. Now, it ain't gonna make you that far, but it will be able to, you'll be able to get more from the little money that you have now. It's little things that black folks don't know about. Stick their money in the bank. They get a check right now. They get a credit card. They get a debit card. And that's it. But there, 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 there are different accounts. There are different kinds. There are different banks. They're often different interest rates. There's so many little things that black folks don't really pay attention to that can stretch your little dollars. So go to flynubiamoney.com and learn some of this stuff. It's, even if you learn one or two of them, it could save you money. Now, let's just say you do have a little exchange. Got a nice little check for your income tax return. Got a little check. You know, got a nice little, little, little slice of dough, right? Got a little bit of money now. You got a little income tax check back, right? Now you got your, in got your income tax check. Your income tax check back. My British, you know, tries to slip in sometimes. Um, you got your check, or somebody gave you some money, or, 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 or a relative, or a family member died and left you some money, or, or you sold a car and you got some money. You sold a car and you have some money. Whatever. It doesn't take a lot to start a business, it don't even have to be a brick and mortar. You don't need all those thousand. All you need is enough to start a website, a, a e e trade business, an e commerce. You get your website up, start a little candle business. There are kid, there's a girl start selling sauce, making millions. People selling candles, making millions. You have a talent. You can do it yourself. But it's just don't. You, you, we have the mentality to buy, make money, work, make money, buy, work, make money, pay bills, work, make money, pay bills. You have to get out of that mentality and you're not gonna get out of that mentality doing the exact same thing you're doing every single day, every single day. I just got a new haircut, y'all. Y'all see it? Looking blind nude. But I still got hairs flying in my face. But it looks good though. So anyway, but we have to get out of that consumer mentality. So that's why I say visit flynubianmoney.com or flynubianbusiness.com. And then you can learn how, how that's right, black folks don't. They don't ever do it, you're right. You have to learn how to make your money work as hard for you as you do for it. Now, okay, one of the things I wanted to talk about, in case you guys are just tuning in again, Miguel Nunez, flynubiankingtv.com, hit the thumbs up, like the video, share the video, and call all your mama and daddy and your friends. The one thing I wanted to talk about tonight was I am tired of all the prayers going up, prayers going up, prayers going up. Every single tragedy, I can hear everybody getting up on television and now getting up on social media and everybody saying, you know, my prayers go up to him and his family. My prayers going up to him and his family. My prayers going up to him and his family and this and this and this. But I want to see, I want to see not only prayers going up, but I want to see actions coming down. I want to see what we're talking about prayers going up and then nothing. Where do we go from here? What do we do? How do it's like we are complaining and screaming that how many mass shootings are it's going to be before there's enough? How many more mass shootings before something is done? Well, how many more rappers are going to be gunned down before we do something? We do something. We do something. We do something. I don't even. I. I, I don't even know what it is. But I think. I think as opposed to uh, reliving and re. It's so horrible. Like I said last night. I don't know if you guys. I just went on for a little bit last night, and I talked about. I don't even know. Nipsey Hussle. I was aware of Nipsey Hussle. I was aware of his Grammys. I was aware, uh, you know, uh, 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 his mix, uh, one of his mixtapes early on, but I didn't really follow him that much. I was aware of where he, 
uh, I was with uh, Lauren London, she's an actress. And But as, as much as that, and like a lot of us, we, wasn't, um, we didn't know that much about him. There are a lot of people who did, but there are a lot of people who didn't know that much about him before this. But I feel a Tupac kind of hurt about it. I feel a Tupac kind of hurt about it because like, he's a good guy, man. He was a really good guy. I mean, he was a really good guy. And it, like, it has nothing, nothing whatsoever to do with what you or what he was or what he did. Period. It's not where you came from. It's where you're going. It's not what you was. It's what you, who you are now. And who he was now is a far cry from whatever they say he was before. Whatever. And I don't remember hearing whatever that was. But there are people saying, well, he just gang remember me. Well, he just gang remember me. He, you know, he lived by sword, die by. He didn't live by no sword, die by no sword. He was somebody who went through a situation, came out of a, a better person, and was taking that better person that he had become and trying his best to help other people in the situation for which he was stuck in come out a better person just like he was. That's what he was. That was, we have to keep his dream alive. Everybody in that particular neighborhood around in areas, I'm here in Studio City, I'm willing to help in that area. We have to do everything. His, his science center that he started for young black kids in that area. Do you know how important it is for young black children in those particular neighborhoods to get science uh, 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 mathematics and, and architecture. That's what he was bringing to that neighborhood. Would save so many, 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 many lives in the future. But we can't just look at this as, you know, you know tragedy, Nipsey Hussle was killed. We have to keep his dream alive because there are enough rappers, singers, entertainers, all on social media, sending their shout outs, talking about how much they loved him, how much they admired him, how much they worked with him. Well, if it's true, then let's put your money where your mouth is. Every single one of you, I want you to donate $1 million to the Nipsey Hustle Foundation to continue his work doing the good that he was doing in the neighborhoods. That's what I wanna see. And your tweets are good. Your tweets are letting everybody know how you felt. But your money will show everybody what you feel and how much he meant to you and not just him, the cause, the cause that he was standing for, his dream, his dream that you believe in, that you wanna help fulfill even though he is not here. I feel that would be more, far more beneficial, far better than as many emotional appeals, as emotional texts, letters, tweets as you could possibly, possibly, possibly tweet, post, all right. The key is where do we go from here? Because if we just do shout outs and memorials by his store, and whatever happens at his funeral, and whatever happens there, if we just do that, and then we go about our own business just like we did with Biggie, and that's what we did with Tupac, and we just go on about the regular regular, it's gonna happen again. But the key is, something has to start a movement. Something has to start, something has to start, a change, something different this time. And I think this is the perfect catalyst because now you have a person who was in the process of starting so many things. Somebody, who is it? Uh, 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 Nick Cannon is gonna pick up the documentary. Who else is gonna pick up, who else is gonna fund? All you niggas talking about you, you enjoyed him, you love him. Who's gonna pick up the, the tab for the Science Center? Who's gonna pick up and, and redo that whole entire mall square where he had his, his store? Who's gonna help all the other kids? Who's gonna reach out to the gang members, the leaders, and, and talk about the peace he was trying to bring about? 
That's what has to happen. If not, his death is truly in vain. I think that is so important. Not that I'm saying anybody, I'm not trying to negate anybody's uh, uh, true, emotional, sincere uh, sorrow, pain, uh, expression of regret, remorse, love, admiration. I'm not trying to negate that in any way, shape, form whatsoever. But what I am saying, that is not enough. To truly honor this man, to truly honor his legacy, to truly honor what he's done, let's, let's get somebody to, 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 to continue his work because that's the person he was. That's who he really was. He wasn't just a rapper. He wasn't just a singer. He was an activist. He was somebody who was dedicated to his neighborhood. He was a, he was a gang member in the past. He was one affiliation and reached across the other aisle to the other affiliation. He was a blood. He reached up to the Crips or a Crip of the blood. He, he didn't matter. Whatever it was, he reached over. He was producing the other side. And he was helping the other side by helping those guys become successful. And then those guys would have become successful. They would have stepped back. They would have started doing things. Then they would have went back and each, each one would have taught teach one. And that would have kept going on and on and on. But if we just let everything completely die that he just started, then we compound his death. The tragedy of his death is compounded. That's exactly what it is. If we allow his dreams to die, then his death would have been in vain. Right now, it is the, the most ridiculous, absurd, petty, horrific, horrific Thing done for what? Uh, what reason? What? And here's something else. I think we're all to blame in a certain way. Because I look at, and I want you all to do the same thing. Go online. Go through every one of your last hundred post, text, whatever. And tell me how many times you count the times that you yourself have said, promoted, advocated the words, now get the pen and write this down, compassion. What the fuck are you looking at? Write it down. Write it down. Okay, compassion. How many times? Think about it. Out of the last 25, 50, 100 texts, posts, Whatever responses, anything that you've written. When was the last time the word compassion, you wrote that word? Okay, that's the one. You got it? Okay. Now, two, go through the same number of text, posts, writings, whatever. And how many times have you said, her forgive, and you wrote forgive, forgiveness? That very word. Love each other, love one another, togetherness, those particular words. Just go through and count. And then next time I'm going to tell you some different words, and I bet you you're going to count more of those words. We have to start spreading. Dude, we, the, the internet is the demonic demon of the world when it's used wrong. Like when you spread love, it can be the greatest thing, but anything other than that, it is. it can be horrible. I mean, this guy was live on TV, on a Facebook Live, thinking it was okay to drive away bragging about what he just done. Saying, oh, yeah, yeah, he had his kid with him, and he had his kid with him, and I shot him. And you thought that was okay? What kind of mentality? And I don't even think any gang member on either side, either side, had anything to do with that other than that crazy person. And I think they are on both sides are equally and equally as upset as every single body is. Because like I said, this man was doing great. But 
what are we going to do if we don't do, if we don't carry on the things that he were doing? Think about it. Think about it. If the, you pass, you hit my car, train, or you get shot or you die, if that really thing happens where you're still there and your spirit comes out and you're looking down and you start to, you can still see your body and you can see the people working on you, if all of that's real, like they say, and you go up there and you look down and you see and you see all this stuff and you see the people crying and you see all the people out there the other night for the thing and then next thing you know and then and then and then nothing yeah. oh then the funeral oh then the funeral and then after the funeral and then and then nothing and, and then nothing and then you're looking at your hood and you're looking at your science center and 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 where where are all the people that with these millions of dollars that was saying how good I was and how much I did for him. And, and, and you looking over there and you going down inside your, and you go inside your, 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 your school. And now you come out inside your school and you see that they ain't got enough books. That no one's keeping it up. No one's because you're not there and no one took up and picked up that dream. And then you go out of there and you go out of there and then you go out of there and then your spirit comes back up over here and you see your neighborhood and now they're shooting and fighting because you was trying to bring everybody together nobody picked up that mantle it's just so many things that i think we compound and i think it would do him it would he would be horrible i think he would feel so bad if he didn't know that all the things that he started didn't continue so we have to continue his dream I'm tired of hearing, oh, Lord, my prayer go up for the family. And, 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 and oh, Lord, my, my prayer go up for them to pay family and everybody. Give another drink down. And, and that's it. Dude, we need more than prayers. Prayers have been going up forever. This, this is ridiculous. And we have to carry on his dream. We have to carry on his legacy and the things that he started because they were so important. And they would have helped so many people. And that's the that's the tragedy of it all to me. That's the biggest tragedy of that one those that one incident will reverberate can can reverberate for years to come in such a negative spiral, such a downward negative spiral from that one incident now. Unless all of the people that loved him and claimed to love him, who worked with him, who have the means and ability to come in and say, you know what? We're going to all come in here together and we're going to keep his dream alive and we're going to uplift his dream. And not only we're going to do bigger and better and more things, we're going to take his because it's enough for you now. He had eight million dollars. This is one of you, every one of you who wrote a John Legend, every one of you who wrote all of these messages for him, y'all can all donate eight million. That's what we should do. Everybody call you all to donate eight million. If I had it, I would, but I don't. Um, all you do eight million, and just put eight million dollars. Uh, 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 eight of you put a million, and you put eight million dollars into his science center, in his name, in his honor. Now that will help educate, send to college, and that one thing that you can do can sprout and become all and do all the other things that he was trying to do because now it keeps people and kids off of games.